in this exhibition, I have uh, tried to uh, depict the kind of uh, environment we are living in, which I find, in my way, somewhat disturbing and it's kind of discordant also. So I try to make sense of something where there's a lot of disquiet. So for example, uh, this work, uh, which I call Artists of the Spectacular, uh, it seems like a circus kind of thing, but nothing is happening as, as one would expect it to happen. happen. And uh, all kind of, so it's not only about uh, what is happening in this country, it's a more or less universal kind of thing where I find that, uh, you know, there is... Uh, so the trapeze artists, for example, they're not holding on. Uh, uh, there is a chair and, uh, right on top. Uh, uh, and it's all about power. There is a dog which is jumping over a very weak... Uh, the, the face of a sparrow. There are these jokers, but uh, even these jokers, one, one joker is stabbing the other. So it's open for interpretation. But uh, uh, I'm trying, trying to make sense of this kind of disquiet. Then I also have uh, a fair number of uh, works around women and the atrocities of uh, women, uh, whether it is molestation in public spaces or the problems which women have when they're returning home from work and there are these urchins hanging around. Also, uh, uh, sexual harassment, rape, both in the public and at, at the workplace and at home. So while rape is a cognizable offense, Indian law gives the husband immunity from charges of marital rape and uh, the only exception being when the wife is younger than 18 years. So this is a depiction of that and very often the community kind of uh, supports it or even uh, the rapist works at the behest of it and what I've tried to show in the bottom corner is in nature, for example, this is a scene of a pollination with a butterfly. Uh, things are not violent at all. So the question is, why are human beings behaving in this kind of bestial manner? This particular work, uh, is, uh, the reference is to uh, an online app in July 2021, which uh, where uh, personal information about 100 Muslim women surfaced and went viral and the pictures were described as deal of the day. So, of course, the app was taken down. But here, what I've done is I've juxtaposed uh, that incident and that app with slave auctions uh, in 19th century America, uh, where slave, uh, uh, slave women were auctioned off. Uh, this is about, uh, these two works about sex workers, sometimes, uh, very, uh, on small occasions it's sort of choice but often uh, compulsions drive them into sex work and uh, the second work is where uh, as they grow old they even find it difficult to find customers so this is uh, like two bodies of work like that uh, I have also used man-animal hybrid to kind of depict and represent what is happening in society, what is happening, uh, and the kind of showing the contrast between the elite and the so-called socialites with, uh, uh, against the backdrop of the, the poor and the marginalized. So, so this is a kind of a supposed cocktail party. We are also seemingly getting obsessed with uh, ourselves. So, so apart from just our only our face or our hair. So there is body shop shopping. There is uh, people getting nose jobs. So I've depicted that. 
in, this, in the work on the right, I, so this self-obsession is becoming so extreme that our, the identity which we give to, uh, we, which we put out through makeup or through uh, the social media becomes our real identity and our original identity gets lost. Uh, and uh, that's why what the reflection in the mirror is the real self. And we're left with the shadowy of what was originally our real. This is again an allegorical work about power and why and psychophancy and uh, what we see today uh, across walks of life and where I've shown animal figures uh, behaving in this kind of apparently gleeful way but uh, there is an underlying message here. This work which I titled Fruits of Being uh, are uh, depicting children and this is based on some real incidents where in one case uh, a, a Muslim boy was slapped by all the children, uh, the student Q and was, was slapped because of some as a kind of punishment while the teacher egged on. In another case, uh, another Dalit boy was urinated upon another. In, an, in a third case, uh, he was hung up and, up and down, uh, up, uh, up on a ceiling and thrashed. And uh, we also, this of course, uh, Tamasha I call, is we often see, see them in red lights where children do acrobatics to earn their bread. So, so this is uh, just a kind of a depiction of that. I mean, I, this work I think more or less is self-explanatory. It's a kind of a, uh, authoritarian back to uh, a fascist kind of regime. And what we have to judge is, are we world over? becoming more fascist in a certain sense. Feed Time in the Jungle is what I call this work, which is, uh, 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 it is like giving morsels uh, to keep, uh, as a appeasement, to keep them happy, when otherwise their hands and bodies are tied up. So it's a kind of an allegorical work. Uh, this is a work which is part of a series on Dalits. Dalits are not allowed to uh, uh, use an umbrella, wear jewelry, and so here in this particular, or, or ride a horse. So in this particular case, he holds the constitution in his hand, and uh, we have kind of a monstrous creature reaching out and maybe perhaps snatching away the rights we, they have, while another animal kind of creature awaits to pounce on him or the horse. These are two uh, uh, works around the media uh, which are kind of self-explanatory. Uh, the real news seems to be called fake and we seem to be more content watching uh, cricket in our bedrooms, so we become oblivious to what is happening around us. And uh, this work called Cockadoodle Do is uh, again self-explanatory. It's, it's about politicians, you know, airing their views, uh, spreading sometimes hate, sometimes uh, kind of wrong messaging. But at the same time, I see reason to hope. So I have a scene from a romantic couple in one of the Indian films. I have somebody showering petals uh, from top. And uh, uh, there is, of course, in the middle, there is a reference to messaging through, through the cyber. So somebody sits a squirrel kind of, squirrel-faced figure sits in a cave, sending out those kind of messages. 
this this large work I call dissolving the territory society, which is a kind of a monstrous society, uh, which is based on very really loosely based on Mary Shelley's novel Frankenstein, where uh, you know uh, Frankenstein in his attempt to create a being like himself ended up creating a monster, and I related to contemporary times where Cybrus the three dog headed creature is kind of powering it uh, through cables and uh, to, a, to kind of dissolve this kind of monster uh, we have flowers and we have Gandhiji uh, offering a pigeon in the back and of course on top right uh, we have uh, I've, I've just shown Fevicol a tube uh, to kind of join the divisions which are taking place. In the backdrop, we, you can you will notice some wrestlers, including women wrestlers. The idea is that, okay, you can uh, sort out these problems without violence in a more dignified way. Also, uh, it is also a representation that often women don't take cudgels on each other, rather they also fight with each other rather than standing together. There's a group of five paintings uh, which are based on Shelley's poem, Mask of Anarchy, which where we, I juxtapose images from the poem with imagined scenarios of uh, contemporary times. Uh, very briefly, written in 1819, there was a Peterloo massacre and the poem was perhaps the first modern statement of the principle of nonviolent resistance. So the speaker in the poem meets four personified caricatures of political leaders of that time. So we have murder, we have hypocrisy who rides a crocodile, we have fraud and last comes anarchy. And when anarchy appears a strange maiden suddenly makes an appearance and comes from a mist bearing angels and prostrates in front of uh, anarchy and then in the final painting uh, anarchy dies. I've also did, done uh, uh, three works which is based on divisions in society and how couples have to bear the brunt of it. So here I'm saying it with flowers here I'm using symbols and in a corner there are eyes of society which is looking on. And this is again uh, where the couple gets disrupted and I've done a whole series on disrupted things. That's why the painting, uh, the, the colors get scattered in a certain sense. And uh, basically what I'm, uh, so I'm, uh, uh, relating it to the kind of trauma where both men and women go through because of this kind of disruption in society. So as I said earlier, I've done a series on Dalits who continue to be oppressed and discriminated against and a large majority of them are compelled to remain in their professions. So they continue to face socio-cultural taboos, especially in the rural areas. So grooms are disallowed from riding a horse. Men and women are not permitted to wear precious jewelry and, uh, uh, or use an umbrella or drink water or own a piece of land. So here on the right is a work where there's a manual scavenger who has a momentary dream where he dreams that he has all these things. Uh, the work on the, in the middle uh, there was an incident in uh, Tamil Nadu where women after 300 years uh, who had always been bare feet stepped out wearing slippers. I added uh, some s silver anklets because they're not allowed jewelry as a kind of means of Dalit assertion. These are works I had done earlier. I brought them here which are watercolor works. Because this one was done in mixed media is again about the scavenger and the elephant in the room. You can perceive the elephant later. And uh, uh, these watercolors I had done which are kind of relate to 
the kind of issues we have. And this is again about women and the disruption they go through. And, uh, so, over and all, there is a focus on women, and, uh, but also about the overall socio-economic climate. So, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching.